It has been more than 30 years since the Fourth Republic began. Government after government have made the attempt to better the lives of Ghanaians and keep the country together. When citizens voted the NPP into office, they promised to improve lives, protect the public purse and unite the country. However, allegations of corruption that have emerged over the last few years have left many concerned. In the sedition of hot issues, we analyze key controversial issues of the GMPC. I am Kemeni Amano, and today I sit with the board chair of GMPC about happenings under his watch. He's also three-time MP and a political colossus of the NPP, which gives us the chance to discuss the legislature and issues about the governing party. My guest on Hot Issues is Frederick Wazemeu Blay. Thanks for sitting with us on Hot Issues. Thank you very much. Chairman, I, I want you to hear this. Over the years, we have become poorer as a nation and as a people, mainly due to pervasive corruption, particularly in the public sector. That's former EC chairperson, Dr. Farijan. Over three decades after the 1992 constitution, we're still talking about pervasive corruption. What do you think could be the cause? Well, in the first place, that's what uh, Farijan has said. Uh, perversion is a canker which Corruption is a mm. conquer that we all must uh, fight against. But I disagree with him that over the years we become poorer. This country has not gone poorer. Indeed, we are not rich. Uh, we are itching, t itching towards uh, being a middle-income country among mm. the community of nations. So in the first place, maybe it's wrong to say that this country has become poorer. Mm. Definitely not poorer. Uh, we've not become rich like the Singaporeans. Right. We've not become rich like the South Koreas or some other countries that you can mention. Right. So we, we haven't become poorer. poorer. What have we become over the years? Because, as you rightly said, we haven't become rich either. Uh, no, poverty are, are, poverty not, is still pervasive. Uh, poverty uh, is pervasive. Uh, you know, at the it, bottom it, of the pyramid where most of us are. Uh, that's very rich indeed. When I I'm looking at you, you are looking at me, and you are saying that most of you are. I don't believe you, sitting here, you are among the, the poorest of this country. But be it oh, as it may. Fair enough. Mm. But you would also not uh, deny that at the bottom of the pyramid, where a lot of poor people are, it's bigger than, you know, those at the top of it's, the pyramid. It's, it's always been the case. Maybe except China that is uh, reducing poverty to the extent that it's moving up. But I, I can't think of any other country, unless maybe you have evidence to the contrary, that uh, people have become richer than, the, in terms of numbers, the poor people. But I agree that poverty is not a very good thing mm -hmm. for every country. That's, I believe, why leadership and uh, governance is all about, to reduce poverty, increase the quality of life of the people, in every so, so we, community. That, we are not poorer, in the society. we are not richer, what we are, are we? We are, we are moving on and uh, we could do better, agreed. Yes, yes. But we should not raise our hands up in frustration and saying that we are rather crawling back. Uh -huh. I don't believe in that, that all over the world, I believe uh, people are not, I can't argue that people in all over the world are becoming poorer than uh, maybe uh, making ends meet. Ghana but was considered one of let's the most expensive countries to live in. Uh, right now, we have our hands behind our back. No, the, uh, I, I, uh, some people say hoping so. to get a second tranche of IMF funds. It doesn't show that we have made no, the kind of progress I, 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 you're talking about. I believe you've mixed the issues. I have. And therefore, it makes it difficult for us to have the kind of conversation that I will be making a very good contribution to. And let's be your audience. All right, so, so, so let, let's separate the issues. Let's separate the issues. Do that, let's hear you. You, you ask that we joined, we've gone to see the IMF. Definitely, we have challenges, like many other countries, particularly in Africa, 
are having, and partic particularly those who are doing well at like Kenya, like uh, Ethiopia, and uh, Ghana, Tanzania, and uh, even Ivory Coast, that, that Nigeria, all other countries have gone. And that is to help us manage our economy, to help us to say such a way that uh, the, the, the difficulties that our countries are going through will not, the impact will not be such that the ordinary people that you've mentioned will feel it too much. And that's why we have joined uh, the IMF, we've come to them to ask for some assistance to ensure that uh, the, 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 the developing partners will have confidence in our country. But, and but what do you think? To do three business three with us. decades after the, in fact, more than three decades now, yes. after the 1992 it's not the first time that Ghana Hang on. I, yeah, we know. It's, it's been if, about if 17 not, at least. About in 17 the least. times. Yes. But that is it not disturbing that after, after 30 years of the Fourth Republic, we, we continue we, to we, go to we, the IMF? We, we cooperate with the IMF. Hand. It's not a question of capping hand. It is always no, capping hand. Please, it is not because please, we want them to when realign. When you go to see a bank mm -hmm. for whatever objective, for whatever you are doing, it's not aid. You've gone down that I have a program and need a certain assistance to help me achieve what I want to achieve. I will pay back. It doesn't mean we've gone cap in hand. We formed, we are part of the IMF. We are partners. And when we need any assistance, we go there. It's, it's, they don't dole it out just mm. like that. They, at the end of the day, you will have to pay. You will meet conditions and you continue developing your country. You continue your programs that you set up. Yourself. Instead of, for example, you have free education. Instead of abandoning it, mm -hmm. say, I will continue to have free education, but I will have to pay for health, education, right. for all that things, and therefore. I so, need so Chairman, what I'm, what I'm, so if you what say I'm we're pointing going to, to IMF, uh -huh. and for that matter, capping up, I, 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 I say, you are mixing the issues, mm. and therefore so, you are so missing the point. What, what I'm pointing to, Ken. And, and hopefully I haven't missed the point on this, not, what I'm, point, not, what I'm I, I pointing so. to yes, yes. is that 17 times, it's a lot, too many times returning to the IMF. It, it means that we have not learned our lessons as a people. We keep going back with the same problems. Not with the same In the problem. least similar problems. Well, if you may call it similar problem, that you should, one, one day or the other, you may need some help here and there. As I say, you go to your bank. If you go to your bank uh, with uh, similar problems, not exactly the same problem, the bank will be fed up. Shouldn't we be learning it. lessons? But That's all I'm that, saying. Shouldn't I'm we saying be the lessons. Lessons, learning concrete lessons that will translate into the fact that we go to the IMF less? I am, I am I'm at a loss. As to what to say, the question you've just asked. If we be learning lessons that we should not go back to IMF for their assistance one way or the other. If that's the question, I'm saying that it's a hard lesson to learn. We will not, because IMF is there to help all of us, not just to help poor people, not just to help poor economies, but even America, France, all other developed countries. Once a while, when there is, some challenges that they are facing, they will definitely uh, have a conversation with IMF and may need some assistance here and there. It doesn't necessarily mean because you've mismanaged your economy or because you should not have ever had any challenges, that's why you have you made a mistake. No. Mm. Going to the IMF depends on what you are going to do. If you are going there and saying, we are broke, give us money, IMF will not do it. I've got a, it's contribution. You the, go the, the to other... IMF when you have a program and you think you need assistance. And that's exactly what this time around is happening. Government of Nanado Danko Akufado has done. The other uh, side of that Afarijan statement is how pervasive he says corruption has become in the country. And, and I'll come back to the point of. 30 years down the line, we're still talking about how pervasive corruption is. We haven't done well in nipping it in the bud. It has grown into a canker, like you put it. Yes, I did say that corruption itself is a canker. It eats. Others who have analyzed it and who have observed it and over time made comments on it have talked about 
sometimes corruption is so pervasive and uh, so harmful to our economies to that extent. It's about a third of whatever our GDP itself is lost to corruption. It means people lose confidence in the, their own economy that the only way to can go about everything is to, to find a very bad way of circumventing rules, of avoiding to pay taxes and so forth. It's, it's not good. It distorts the economy of every country. And corruption is not just typical to Ghana. I believe it's all over uh, the world, but more so we the developing countries. The government of Nanado Danko Akufuado, so far as I am concerned, and as much with all sincerity that I could say this, I'll put in more efforts another the Republic, public, if I tear the Fort Republic, to fight corruption hmm. than any other government that I can think of. I'm being sincere. I see. Why? I'm saying that, how do you fight corruption? It's not vowing to be a saint as an individual, and therefore other people following your examples and so It's important for you as an individual to set a good example. But the kind of institutions you put in place, kind of policies that you put in place, the policies with emphasis mm -hmm. will fight the corruption for you. Digitization is one. This government is pushing digitization to the extent that when you are paying your taxes, you pay it. Sometimes you don't need to uh, have an interface with an individual. But you go and you push in to pay for electricity to do all that stuff. It's digitized. It's good. This country is going down. Yeah, ha and hasn't that, that always been the case? No, it has not been the case. Sometimes you go to a small hole, pinhole, you pay, somebody gives you a receipt, and it, it's... Oh, that it's, was a long time ago. Uh, it's been a long time ago. Now we moved away from it. But that's not all. This government, democratic institutions like Yoko, giving it more money than this country and other fourth republic has ever had. Police have been empowered more than any other government have done under the state of fourth republic. The judiciary has been empowered to the extent they've been giving them anything that they need, uh, training and individuals, more employment, more courts than any other government has done under the fourth the third and fourth republic. That's not all. Any other institution that is supposed to fight corruption in this country has been given assistance, has mm -hmm. been given help. Its budget has been approved of, even increased budget. I see. That which, is which I believe has had that an is the budget. best way to fight corruption in our country. Individuals must also make efforts, yes? Right. But so you can't go into any, anybody's room, bedroom, to know whether you are corrupt or not. Some other things are done uh, behind the doors. Some are doing DS in the offices. I we see. will not know. I mean, the, fl the flip side of that, uh, you know, if of you the, have allowed me to finish with that, the, the, not only the Attorney General's office has been held, but the Accountant General, the Auditor General, been given a free hand to do whatever it thinks it could do to fight corruption in this public corruption. I see. But it's, it's also under the same administration that we've had a lot of clearing of cases or individuals suspected of corruption uh, here or there. This administration no, no, no. has also cleared come, come quite, again. quite a number come, of come people. Come again. Have, they? This government, Senator Dunkwa Kufa, this government, if anybody is accused whether it's an allegation of corruption, and it's quite reasonably so that people are talking about it. It's, it's referred to the, uh, let's say, police to investigate. Mm -hmm. It's referred to Yoko to, to investigate. If they do investigate, the government is not interfering. It's allowing the law to take its course. It's allowing the, the young man, or is it a, a special prosecutor, right. to... to do whatever he thinks is right. To, to have his way to ensure that he's fighting corruption I from mean, his so, own so, so, critics perspective. Will, critics but that ask. doesn't mean that the court can't interfere. That doesn't mean that if he has anybody who feels that his rights are being truncated or interfered with, can go to the court for remedy. If that is done, 
It's not the fault of government. Government is not interfering in any way. Well, I'm surprised you're saying this because in the lead up to the 2016 elections, one of the nicknames that the NPP had given then President John Ramani Mahama was that he was a clearing agent. It would seem that the NPP administration uh, and the president, Nanado Danko Kufuadu, will also fall within that say, same description of clearing well, agents. I want you to be a bit specific about whatever you want to say. If you say, what, what do you mean As by that? Just, I investigations have, not have accused, happened. I have oh, not hang, accused. Hang uh, investigations have happened, but yes. the people have been cleared at the end of the day. Well, if, look here. So he's also a clearing Kem, agent. Kem, no, I wouldn't uh, argue that way. Kem, if any investigation had taken place over an accusation, allegation, or some suspicion of somebody having been involved in any conduct that could be described as corrupt practices or in our constitution. And it's referred to the appropriate body and the investigation takes place. And uh, the person is cleared. Me, he as a lawyer. I will not say that a uh, president of the republic or any person in authority has become a clearing house. I've never accused um, my very good friend, uh, President John Bahama, has constituted himself into a clear agent. But definitely, I, could, I will defend that President Danado uh, Danko Akufado has not become a clear agent in this country for those who are involved which, in corrupt which, which practices. Case, which, no which, 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 scandal, which scandal have we had in this country that has led to prosecution and that has led, well, it has led to prosecution, but has led to conviction? Well, even when it seemed as though evidence was clear, uh, critics you know, were no, no, that. please, please. I, uh, are you asking me to give you instances where there has been conviction of, of any of, scandal of who? that of, we have had? Previous, no, uh, no, uh, of, uh, of uh, within this administration, we've had a lot of uh, corruption cases, we've the allegation um, of corruption, allegation of corruption, if allegation Absolutely. doesn't mean that. Uh, I don't believe that, uh, Kem, for this conversation, you're assuming that if there is an allegation of corruption against anybody, but there must necessarily... I am not assuming, but I'm also saying it's very there convenient... There must necessarily be a conviction. Absolutely. I to convince I... you that, uh, that, that uh, uh, the right is being done. Fair point. Is that, is, that the also, point? is that your point? That is not my point. But then, I, then, I say then, you make then, a fair argument there. But what I'm, I'm driving at is the fact that it's also convenient when every corruption scandal ends up in the suspects being cleared. Isn't it too I I disturbing? can't think of, and I'm not ready for your program now, to cite examples of uh, uh, what you have alleged as... Uh, every allegation or instance of corruption and that has been investigated. May, may I give and you an example? Give me an example, I will take you. Charles Bissou, who was then uh, secretary, I believe, for the Joint Task Force on Galamse. When, uh, Be very careful when, when, what, you, what you want to say. Hang on, on your hang on, hang on. Yes. When, uh, you know, that video of him allegedly accepting bribes so people could go and do... I'm, I'm glad you use the word allegedly. No, no, hang on. I'm, I'm glad you well, said. I'm getting there. So we, are, we, are in a, we, are, we are in a period where people even use AI to even make allegation against you. People. So you think that Charles now, Bissou in the, that the child video is, the, allegedly no, accepting no, bribe the was issue, AI? The Charles Bissou's issue, I know from close quarters because I know him as an individual, has taken on some of this allegation, is taking on the, the, the director of state prosecution, that's uh, uh, public, the public prosecutor, the two of them are fighting it out in court. I see. He's taking it up and it's before the courts. I'm not here, sitting here. I can't say that it's an allegation which is true. Mm. Indeed, from what I gathered, that there were some people who were after him right. and therefore f planned it, did it in such a way, even filmed it to make it look like as if he has been involved in it. So as it is, and as I talk to you, I'm aware they are dealing with the state prosecutor, is it the public prosecutor, and they are in court, as I talk to you. He's going to, he's picked up his forms, he's going to parliament. Mm -hmm. He's going to, uh, is it, to 
for primaries, right. for, for a scheduled seat. I believe that at the end of the day, if he's convinced that maybe he's been involved in some very bad corrupt practices, he would not dare have that uh, audacity to go and pick the force. Chairman, when we come back, we have a few other issues to discuss uh, as we head into elections 2024. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. Frederick Wazimeu Blay is my guest today on the program, and uh, we spent a, a, you know, a fair chunk of our first segment on corruption-related issues. One of the things that have come up strongly in the course of the week is what appears to be condoning of open vote buying and vote selling. That is how the former EC chairperson puts it. Um, what's your take on that? Yes, um, I think I will agree with him that it's, it's so fortunate that uh, democracy will be at number bind. And indeed, uh, if one wants to be objective, that uh, it's becoming a norm that uh, when we are going for election, primaries at party levels, and uh, maybe even towards uh, the national elections, if one is not careful, some people resort to what you refer to as vote, vote buying. Vote buying is not just giving them money, but sometimes uh, going to offer people uh, salt, mm. matches, tinapa, rice, all kinds of very petty, petty items. Right. And then, which uh, is unfortunate. And uh, everybody is worried, and I know in the NPP, people have expressed their disgust and they are annoyed that in some instances, delegates who are going to cast their ballots in favor of a, a candidate one way or the other at primary level. Mm -hmm. And not even just to become parliamentary candidates for national elections, but even party officials, executives at both uh, at all levels, from police stations up to national level, that we've been all involved. I see. It's, it's, a, it's, it's something that... Uh, Is the party taking any keen interest in that? To... We're definitely discussing it at all levels. Right. Again, it's, it's not healthy and it's not good. It doesn't even help. Uh, it, it works towards people not being interested those who are good quality uh, material who could serve the party and serve this nation, whatever p position that one can think of, fear to go into because they don't have the kind of money that, you know, if you are not careful, individuals uh, who you, you doubt even the sources of their money, mm. so forth, will hijack the system and to, to the detriment of our national welfare. I think we should all take it seriously, not at As sh sh Should the Electoral Commission be whipping the political parties in line at this point? Uh, if they, there's anything that they could do, uh, could they lay down the rules? The rules are there. Yes. It's enforcement, maybe the only problem. Sometimes, as it's a corruption, uh, it's said that you are not there how you could see people distributing money or people sharing uh, goodies to individuals who have matches or whatever, name it, uh, sewing machines and uh, TV sets. Among all the parties, I would say, it's been happening. And I think we should do as much as possible. Statesmen and individuals of goodwill, we should all together, uh, across the parties, make efforts to minimize it. Mm. If you cannot stamp it, totally. After, after, the after the NPP's often constituency primaries, the OSP had uh, put up, uh, you know, um, wanted list of people, people who, it's, you know, they said had engaged in um, vote buying of sorts during the primaries. I mean, how did the party take that? The party has not issued any statement. No, on the, that. the OSP has, I but think, the party think, hasn't spoken. You're no, right. Because if the 
we don't want to interfere with that. We don't want to say that he says he's doing his work and uh, we, we will either say that we, we support him or we don't support him. If, if he thinks he has good reasons to, as it were, conduct investigation into that and come out with his findings and maybe go ahead to prosecute those who are involved, kudos. I think we endorse whatever he I does. See. Corruption in whatever form should not should be frowned upon. It should not be encouraged. Okay, so I, I mean, I want to take you back into time. Um, you have spoken about how people will be given um, even salt. That could be some kind of advice. I, I didn't use some few words, some other that bentra. Because some people use yes. Uh, uh, they could use. So, so I, 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 I want to ask you, yes, Chairman. Yes. When you promised 275 buses for the constituencies, was it vote buying? I did not promise, unfortunately. I did not promise that I'm giving just like that. Okay. I'm saying that we want the parties to be independent. We want my party to engage in businesses that will make our party sort of dependent on central government. You'll be independent. And therefore, we go to the bank. Where the banks were ready to say we will help buy buses and the buses will be managed and handled by the constituencies. That's what it is. That's was it vote buying? It's not vote buying. But it was in the heat of no, the. No, no, wait. It, 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 no, it no, was wait. in the heat of the uh, Congress, no, wasn't no. it? When when you are going for an election, uh -huh. you only tell the people what you are capable of doing to help the party. What you are capable of doing, not that individuals. I want to give you money. Also, I'm saying, look here. I want the party to be independent, and I'm, I believe though. So. And I'm saying the only way to do so is that we will not uh, depend on central government or money banks who will detect policies and indeed uh, extort some sort of money from us when we, are, we find ourselves in power. So let's be independent. We pay dues, not just dues. Mm -hmm. We undertake ANC has been doing that. I know many other countries in the, in the world, like in Germany and co. The parties and that take some profit making businesses. Okay. And for that matter, they have themselves. They so can't so where, where are those buses? The buses, as I talked, a hundred of them are in. We've had run problem with our bankers, the banks mm. who sub, who give us money to do that. And because of the COVID time, we had a problem as to whether we could run them because the numbers we we we, we thought the numbers within uh a bus for a, a journey, instead of uh, 13, should be reduced to seven. It will not profit making. So we wasted a little time on that. Now that we're ready, the banks are saying that they want the money. So at the moment, we are, we are, we are, we are struggling over it. The buses, 100 of them, are so in the custody of, 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 of the bank now. Oh, that's a shame. So you it's couldn't fulfill your promise. We, we couldn't ask that, but we are still pursuing So what happened so, to the three million dollars you put down in support of... of, of uh, somebody helped us uh -huh. to put the three million down. Oh, it wasn't and from you, because that's the impression that... It's not that my money, you, you, Well, you said I you have put seed money of three million dollars. I've through me. I facilitated it. Right. To somebody who's helped us. I didn't put the money. I don't have... Some even insulted me that I have 11 million. How did I have it? It's because I was a chairman of uh, GMPC, maybe you yes. are going to steal the money. Unfortunately, it was an expression of ignorance. They didn't know who and how we were going to do that, who is going to help us to do mm -hmm. that. The bank was ready. The bank is, 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 is in existence. They didn't want to be brought forth, brought up, brought into politics and so forth. Right. So, so what, what's going that, to happen to that now? Uh, we are we, we're talking about it. We managed to, to bring it in there. The one who helped us is insisting that you take an int some some interests over it over time. But we are running against time because uh, we are having that kind of uh, problem with a bank. I see. So, yes. But it's, it's real. To... People think that you promise that you dash them the buses and so forth from your pocket. So did you tell Shraj this, that the $3 million wasn't coming from you? Shraj didn't even bother to find out whether the buses have been brought in my name or through the banks or through uh, some kind of company. Because they you just, refused to just, comply. That's what I did. Said. They would want to, to, to call. I said, how do you me? How do you call, call on me? When I'm not as an individual bringing it out and so on. So we were battling it over in court. Of course, this the application. But I see. So it, 
it is a reality. Let your listeners know that I did not put my hand in my pocket to cough the three billion to bank. It was 11 million. Mm -hmm. The banks were going to do that. A bank agreed, looked at the proposal, and thought it was a very reasonable proposal. It, it would then appear that the minorities backing that you, you, the, you know, they suspected you of corrupt practices of the GMPC fell into water. Hot air. And that sometimes it's convenient for them to do that. That's why I'm saying you should be a bit careful when, for example, you mentioned Bishop's name that he's been involved in corruption. And as I said, I know him very well. I will be careful in describing what is then as having been involved in corruption. So who are those who gave you the $3 million? I will prefer not to talk about it on your show. Yes, but definitely a, a good friend of ours to that. Yes. So anyway, let's, let's move away from the buses. Your time at GMPC has also been characterized by a lot of allegations of corruption. I'm not aware what kind of corruption of the... When the Petro SA deal came up, there were questions as to whether or what your interest was in pushing that deal. We also know about the GMPC Gensa deal. Um, what really is going on at GMPC? I don't know much of Gensa because uh, I was not too much involved right. in it. But Gensa, I believe, was not also a question of corruption. Did you review that deal? We didn't review it because it was okay. There was not... A, wrong with that. Okay. Uh, as I said, it was a question of uh, an approach. Some other proposal came in early, later, whether we should rather continue with it. But we had already penned our signature to it. And Jensa was insisting that we should go on. I think I some see. kind of understanding had been reached, but there was nothing like in the corrupt practices on the part of officers of uh, uh, GMPC but the, but CS, the CSO had said that the deal was not good for the country. Well, they had uh, an opinion. That one, I can't fault their opinion. But definitely if they had taken good time to look at it. In the same way that they talked about, uh, what is it, South African mm -hmm. matter, when they had no idea what it was all about. We'll, we'll get Jamba. into petrol, so, but That's you... right. So uh, it's all linked. So the CSO, they could have an opinion and maybe absolutely wrong. That's all. Okay, so let's talk about that deal. How That's much have which, we made from the, you know, the GMPC uh, Gensa gas deal? Well, it's um, not yet uh, implemented. It's yes. not yet implemented. Yes, they are building the pipelines and trying to, as it were, when will, put when, it to, when, I can't say for lines? sure, okay. but very soon it will. It, it's they put in as much as over five to six hundred million dollars. The five it. to six hundred million dollars is coming from GMPC. G from, oh, not oh. from Gensa. I see. Yes, yes. Is GMPC making any monetary, um, you know, commitment or No, GMPC is not making, towards, uh, but the gas, we are the aggregators. We, we, we have the gas, and therefore, because the gas is given to us by uh, the, uh, our, our, the, our partners who are mining or, as it were, pumping the gas from their operations, and then we take it and give it back to uh, Gensa and any other... But of course, sometimes we use it our own self. We could right. put up, we could get to Ghana gas. But as we Ghana gas may not be ready at the, presently to make use of the gas. So Gensa is ready and uh, they signed that we should give it to them. Well, so, and, so, uh, so the thing that the CSOs had problem with is the fact that the discounted rates to Gensa. I think they had it totally wrong. They had it totally wrong. We looked at it. So the, numbers the rate not, is not discounted to... Uh, it, not to, to Gensa. The no. gas rates are not discounted no, to no, Gensa. No, they are not. They are not. I, I think see. they got it wrong. Oh, I see. Um, we'll see what happens when, you know, the, the entire, entire deal comes to fruition. That's so right. we'll put Gensa on, uh, Gensa on the table. Let's talk about Petro Essay. Petro Essay is one of those that got you really famous. Infamous. Infamous, That's absolutely. Right. Put, infamous, put it the way you want to. Inf infamous is the is the right word. The right word. Yes. So yes. Petro SA deal is one of those that got you infamous. That's right. Um, as board chair of GMPC. That's right. Why were you so insistent? Uh, what did I insist on? Please, you. As I said, I wish we could have more time to discuss this, mm -hmm. because I, at some stage, uh, I was told, take it easy, don't discuss too many things. Uh, to the public of Athens, you don't do business. Business concerns money, and sometimes money 
prefer to operate in silence. So tell us what we do Let not me, know. What you don't know is this. Uh -huh. Patro SA is a partner among a couple of uh, companies that are involved in TALO, or TALO, you know, in the operations of TALO. There are other two or three companies who are involved in it. They are all partners. One of them decided that I'm no more interested and I want to sell my, what is it, my uh, shares as my operations within the, uh, what we have come together to any of you who would be interested in that. They've already signed some kind of uh, understanding that if, in fact, it's common practice that me and you, we set up a company and you want to give out your shares. You give me the option of uh, uh, first refusal. It's typical in common law mm -hmm. that people do that. Then Petro has insisted that they should have the uh, first refusal to buy whatever uh, the other company was. I don't want to mention mm -hmm. some of their names because... I don't want to discuss that one into details. That's what they decided to do. And then we in Ghana decided that we are buying it ourselves instead of you petroleum. And indeed, we even entered into some kind of... But there are other uh, contracts that they had already signed. In one instance, the one who is selling is saying that, look, if you buy it, you, you should take care of or take charge to deal with all other people who makes any claim over what I'm selling to you. It's, it's a bit complicated, but they did it cleverly. Now, Ghana decides to buy it. Patrice said, I don't have the, the right of it. Ghana was not even, uh, Ghana has a, only a carrying interest, and it's not party to the, to the agreement that we signed among ourselves. And for that matter, we have a priority. So we, they first said it. Before me, I came into, they agreed with us that we should discuss it. And we said, that, look, instead of you, taking it all. My proposal, which we went up and went, you know, take it 50 and let us all take it 50, the proposal, with the consent of the minister. That's just what the discussion is going on. I see, but the minister, the minister says he didn't give consent for that. I'm saying that it had not, we had not put in You had not got to that point. To that point. I see. And yet people started accusing me. It wasn't just people, the minister himself had also said that. I don't want to go there. Why not? I, uh, please, I would prefer not to discuss that. But it was unfortunate that anybody would accuse me involved in it of having done anything wrong. I see. The yeah. minister had gone all the way to write to the president that... As I said, I prefer uh -huh. not to talk about it now. What's but your relationship with? I don't, want, I don't want to discuss that. I prefer not to say that it was unfortunate that anybody would write that you are involved in anything untoward or you'll be involved in Maybe if you are not careful, you may even say that involving corrupt practices because you know there's nothing wrong. And uh, indeed, at the end of the day, even the uh, Attorney General wrote that the position I took was right. But uh, as it is, let's put it somewhere else. When we come back, let's talk about the NPP. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Issues. Um, my guests today, if you're just joining us, you've missed much of the conversation with Frederick was Mewu Ble. He is a former chairperson of the NPP and he's currently the board chair for GNPC. Let's talk about the party you were once uh, chairman for. We, we are still waiting for that big announcement when, uh, you know, the flag bearer announces the running mate. So as a member of the, uh, the NEC and the National Council, what are those things that you'd look out for in the name that is brought to you? You're going for an election. And the, the, the presidency wants somebody who will also contribute towards the winnability of the ticket. And uh, you look at it, where he's coming from, who is, uh, the person is, uh, it's, his age is... Uh, affability, what will he try to plug in where we, we, the president himself may short, be short of? Will he be an economist? No, the president may be more has inclined towards economy. So will 
the other person also do that or will more governance. These are some of the considerations. But as I said, it's an elbow room for the president to come out with someone if he's at it. But of course, you know, I mean, haven't done that, then you bring it to the National Council uh -huh. and the National Council will discuss that. So I I'm, just, I'm just wondering, yes. again, trying to go into the mind of the National Council, is there a list of criteria that, you know, if person A is brought to you, you would measure by and say, well, this person would get us where we want to go to? To be very honest with you, there isn't any set down criteria that the party will go by. But uh, these are people, National Council members, are very experienced individuals, knowledgeable. But the first thing is that a person loyalty towards the party is the first thing. Because uh, whatever happens, the president should be loyal. And you, the vice, should also be loyal to the party. You don't want to bring anybody who will be think on his own. Mm -hmm. that is, uh, I, 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 I came there by just the choice of the president. For that matter, I don't care more about the party. Members of the council thinking as a macrocosm of the party itself mm -hmm. should be at ease and have respect and like the person that will be brought to be the alter ego of the president. And I think it is important that the president that's the vice president who is now uh, the flag aiming, bearer. Uh, mm -hmm. our flag bearer and aiming, aiming to be the president, which I think you be should have somebody that would please the party as well. I see. But above all, the person should be uh, extremely knowledgeable and uh, honest, hum humble for people to link up and uh, easily associate with and Kenyans should like the person as well. Oh, Ghanaians must like the person. Of course, yes. That's what is all politics about. Electoral politics. Oh, I, I, well, I don't know how strong that is. I mean, at the time Dr. Baumia came into the picture, we didn't even know him. Yes, but we didn't know him, but we grew to like him because within a very short time, we got to know him. That he's a very uh, amiable, likable, extremely knowledgeable. So someone with high likability. That's right. I see. Um, I, I, I want us to touch a bit more on happenings within the party. Has the National Council perhaps um, assessed why uh, your MPs have decided that it, they wouldn't be going in the 2024 elections? The, 18 of them. You mean we should assess it? I don't understand. Have you it. tried to analyze why? Well, after the analysis, individual, individuals have, have analyzed some of these things. One, from my perspective, and not that of, I, I can't say so, for every other person. Well, but no, but, but as, a, as a collective, yes. uh, has the party national council looked into that matter? I we mean, why no, are these people going? No, but we, we, there are only about 18. 18. It's not a high, very high rate of attrition. It's only 18. And uh, some of them have been there for, one person at least, I'm aware, have been there for 20, over 28 years. Isn't that the problem? The well, fact well, that you're losing that experienced hand, the person who brings clout I, I will, to I will, parliament. I will have preferred, I prefer experience. I was in parliament for three terms yes. and I, I went out. I was pushed out. I went out. Let me put it that Wait, way. What do you mean by you were pushed out? <laughs> yes. Lost the election. You, you lost the election. Yes, you were not pushed out. out. So let's make it that way. Uh, but some were saying that I've been mean, three th conservative terms. You are Mugabe. It's a Lemble Mugabe that you've been there for too long. But now some others have been there for, let's say, 28 years. So it's, it's now accepted. 16, 20, 24 years, and 28 years. Mm -hmm. Now, and these are strongholds, invariably. And if they decided to move, right, I think it makes it gives room for others to also come up. But I agree with you that experience is good. We, we have... There was a, a senator in the U.S. who has been there for 50 years. You can imagine. Quite recently, a lady, in, also a senator, also, also but, gave but, up. But that's, that's why I'm asking. But, but you see, one very important thing about electoral politics, about democracy, is that you go for election. 
and therefore you it's, it's not a place where you go and then you stay there for life you must test and test over time for oh, years so so what, what, years. what i'm hearing so, what i mean what i'm gleaning from what you have said is the party is not particularly looking at these people that have left yes. um, because it's not a high attrition rate. It's not a high attrition rate. I they're see. only 18. So the, the party doesn't see it as a problem at all? Well, of course it is a problem for people, to, for party to lose experience hands. But if they've decided to, to go, what can you do? You can't persuade them that they should stay against their will. But besides that, I'm saying nobody forced any of them to leave. They themselves said, I'm tired. 28 years, I'm tired, I want to leave. Another 24 years, I know somebody 20. Somebody even eight years says, look, I've, I've had enough, I want to leave. I think we should give them the, uh, the comfort of that option. In recent history, the NPP uh, took the lead in seeking redress from the courts as far as elections are concerned. One of the things that we've seen is, or we've heard recently is the fact that frivolous election petitions should have punitive action. Um, is that the way to go? I don't, I don't agree. Well, punitive action may be the cost. You may be mocked at the cost. But uh, punitive action, what do you criminalize or what? Or you should be asked to... For, waste, for wasting the court's time. It's, for wasting... always be, it's always been that judges may be hard on you. They may say that don't bring frivolous uh, applications or sometimes in, in some past, sometimes some individuals are banned from coming up. They become uh, vexatious litigants. You stop them from always coming to court with all kinds of... Uh, but you know what? This is a democracy. And you should not truncate people's right, the access to the court for whatever frivolous... It's better for them to bring frivolous relation that to curtail them from That's bringing it. some some application that may turn out to be very important well, and akin to human rights. I see. While we're on the subject of elections, I do want to ask you about the 2020 elections, um, events in Techiman that have resurfaced, you know, in, in our polity. Um, a number of people were shot and killed in that elections in Techiman. Uh, why does it seem as though there hasn't been any interest to bring perpetrators to book under this administration? Well, I, I don't speak for the uh, Attorney General Department and uh, prosecutors and so forth, but you know what? Uh, it's not new. I don't want to use that as an example of, uh, because it's not new, we should also, but uh, I believe uh, one or two or three people might have been shot in Techima. Eight of them. Eight. I'm not sure of the numbers, but definitely. Is that uh, you're not sure because the number is too high to believe, isn't it? Uh, I would say that they're quite staggering. Yes. Eight, eight people, eight, uh, including uh, uh, teenagers. Yes, that's unfortunate. It shouldn't have happened, and uh, I don't know what is holding back the prosecution from going ahead. But I wish we should speed it up because it's better. It's it's a blot in our you know, credentials towards democracy and so forth. But mind you, it's not the only uh, 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 prosecution that had been stalled over time. I do remember that when we were in opposition, uh, in, uh, we went to the upper east for a by-election, we assaulted brutally, me personally, with others, we assaulted brutally. We reported the matter. Police took, uh, what is it? They took statements from myself, and that's the end of mm -hmm. it. And nothing had been done about it. Even in our time, nothing had been done about it. There had been instances of that nature, but I would prefer that the AG's department will act uh, expeditiously and bring you know, people who are corporates. I, I, I don't to, know, to but I, I don't think that the, that's a matter the AG is looking into. Uh, I, I can't speak for or against whatever it is, but as I said, the police I mean, should finish it, with the investigation it disturbing? and bring it up. Uh, but it's, it's been three long years. I'm saying there had been instances in our time where I personally brutalized. Some people were beaten mercilessly. We know that those who did it. We reported it to the police. The police did very little about it up till now. But maybe over time, 
we swept it under, you know, under the bridge. But this distance, such instances, we must eight people haven't lost their life. We should mm. not take it for granted. I see. So uh, I, I do want to see, you, you were in Parliament for three times. You say you left in 2008. Yes. Um, tell us what you think about the current Parliament. The current? The, the, the Parliament of today. Uh, it's interesting. I think it's, it's one of the most interesting times of our political development. And uh, Parliament, uh, I sit back and, uh, and, and, and I'm amused by the story. It's, indeed, it makes Parliament very, very important. It's not one-sided. It's, it's balanced. And uh, in spite of its difficulties, that's why I will praise the president for his uh, conduct of affairs, governance in this country. That in spite of the difficulty that he's facing in parliament, in spite of... Uh, well, what's the difficulty talent, the, the difficulty that every, in parliament? Every, even, uh, 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 even it's the government's budget itself sometimes stands the rest of being thrown out. Sometimes not... For, for, good, for good reason. No, what for good reason? Well, not if the finance minister has not not partisan basis. No, if not, the finance nothing minister nothing else apart from that. Is it? Is it if the finance minister has snuck taxes into the budget, uh, the minority well, on the, the other decision. hand should but, be but, able but, to. That's right. The, the minority decide that sometimes if you don't take this one off, and it's like in America at the moment. It's it's almost a hung parliament, and uh, the, the, the 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 minority. I'm talking about Republicans. Gives her. Huh, to government sometimes it's almost runs to a halt literally to a halt and that's what has been happening to Ronaldo Danko Akufado's government but irrespective of that we're still uh, uh, marching on things are going on we, we this country we are not at blows we we, we we try to induce the NDC towards democracy although they have uh, they have a, a history a history of violence a history of anti-democracy. They call it revolution. I see. Of, well, no, that's not it. But we are trying to induce them that they should, the gap of, of, of fighting, the gap, the gap of shooting, going with cutlasses. When people go on the say they say they should come with cutlasses and so forth. We should put it aside and move on toward democracy. I, I, that's, not a, that's not a fair statement to the NDC. Huh? Um, it's not a fair statement to the NDC, and and, and seeing that they are, the not here, they, they, are not, they are not here to respond. I'm glad that they are not here, but let, I'm taking the advantage to just you give me the platform. That's what I'm saying. That's we are trying to induce them to march towards the road of democracy. Well, they, they would they would say that that is what you had us believe, but the true um, Buga Buga people are really the NPP. Have you seen so? Do you believe so? Well, we have seen what the NPP, under the NPP administration, has happened to demonstrators. We have seen what has happened to journalists. Oh, th uh, we have seen... How, how old are you? We have... Uh, it means that you were a little, a little girl when the, the NDC was me, I was put in prison for at least a year. The NDC. And the, it's, it's PNDC. They've done that. But they, my, my friends were, were maimed, some beaten, some disappeared. PNDC, NDC. That's what they did. But, but we, we, we are have, living we, with we, that. We've come, we, we've we've come, come, them. Come, we've come a long way since we've then. We've come a long way. Since so then, we I still mean, want to drag them to come along. And they need more time. To, the more time in the, you know, they should stay out of power and let's, you know, establish the culture of democracy. And then they should, their DNA should change a bit. <laughs> While we're on the subject of Parliament, That's right. we've seen verbal spats between the uh, Speaker of Parliament, uh, Alban Sumana Bakvin, and yes. uh, the President, Nando Dankwa. It doesn't Akufuad. matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's part of democracy. Is it? We, will, we should have it. It's okay. I read it and I'm, I'm, I'm a little amused about it. As, as, as. But it's okay. I know Albert Babin. We were in Parliament together. The President also was in Parliament with him. So these are... Friendly hostilities. Let's continue with that. But it, it, it would appear that it was stall, or it is stalling, uh, really important bills. In no, uh, well, what do you the, 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 listen? Criminal the, offenses amendment bill have not been assented to because of that. Yeah, but the president has a right to sometimes ask parliament, hasten slowly. The Latin word is festina lente, hasten slowly. These are checks and balances that you could come out with a bill. 
and me, I will look at it sober, soberly and say, no, this one, maybe you made it, you are too much. Popular majorities can make mistakes. Excuse me. Mm. Popular majorities can make mistakes. Parliament can make mistakes as well. In the same way that President could. So President says that it's checks and balances. You've come out with your bill. I've looked at it and I say, please, let's look at it from this way. And I think it's unconstitutional. Take a look at it. I'm advised by my uh, attorney general and officers that there is a problem here. As Look it, at it again. As it we chairman, continue. Chairman, you, you have had we continue. You, you have had an explanation and a reason for um, untoward conduct of the administration. Is that something that this government of the day has done or is doing that you wish they were not doing? I talk with you more, but uh, no, but I'm not I'm not here to sit with you so that uh, my criticism of my own government, it is not my style to come and sit here and say that I'm criticizing government for Why this not? and that. There it's, are quite a number of things that, look, no, 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 quite a number of things that I may not be very happy with, but that's between like us. No, no, I will not discuss it here. Why not? But it's definitely, only, that, that is public service. No, no, if no. you're able to openly uh, criticize your government and I, say I, that I could, you should and, be and, doing and, this uh, and, uh, and uh, the right circumstances, I would do that. If you ask me, if you invite me here to come and talk about conduct of government, what has done happened? What do you think of your government of this? Maybe another. Well, that's another what I'm time. asking. So, no, what do you. What? It's not today. You, we will discuss it and we won't finish. No, just one. But, uh, I one. mean, what, the conduct of the administration, what is it that is happening now that you are not happy with, you wish was done better? Uh, Prosecution should have gone on faster. We're late over that. See, uh, we have also, the road, we spent so much doing more roads earlier on. We should have paced ourselves out a bit because now people need more roads towards election. And uh, we should have paced ourselves to now. It's now pressing too much. Everybody is asking. Although this government had done more roads than any other government within the third and fourth, but people are still asking for more. They are never satisfied. Mm. It's like a river twist. They will okay. ask for more. We should have paced ourselves. Uh, we, we overran it, and then COVID and all other things that people say we should not talk about have come in, and therefore it's affected us a little negatively. But government should also do more telling the, the country what they have done, not what we have not done. We'll see about that. Thank you for sitting with us. Thank you too. Frederick Wazemewu Blay is my uh, guest today on Hot Switch Issues. You may know him as Freddie Blay, one time chairman of the NPP and now GNPC Botch chairman. I am Kemeni Amano. I hope you enjoyed our episode. I'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye.